Hey, here we are again. It's Tricky, the show that streams and plays, live teaches and plays of some trick takers, streamers, shedders, I said streamers, shedders, climbers, all kinds of different card games that we're into or that we maybe are just trying for the first time. Uh, tonight, I am joined by Rob. Hello. And it's a pretty empty room because it's just me and Rob because tonight we are just playing some two-player trick takers which is a fun space that I think people can explore in the trick-taking world because a lot of times uh, people kind of think these can't be two-player games. There's There's been a couple over the years that have been big hits that kind of broke that mold, like Fox in the Forest, a lot of people talk about uh, co-op games like The Crew, but there's a lot of good competitive two-player trick-takers that I think are worth a look. And tonight, we're going to take a look at Catchy and A Weemba Way. So we're going to start out with a teach and play of catchy, and then we'll do a teach and play of a Weemba These are both pretty quick games, so I wouldn't expect either to be long. Uh, while you're enjoying the stream, hopefully, if you like what you see, you can visit us on dadsonamap.com to get information about all of our other shows that we have going on, uh, the Coin Collectors, the Choo Choo Crew, Tricky, and the Dads on a Map flagship, so to speak. Uh, we are on the eve of DomeCon in dallas so i'll be leaving tomorrow morning driving eight hours to get to dallas and enjoy five days of gaming with a bunch of domers and it's going to be a lot of fun so visit us on the website join us on the discord if you want to keep in touch about games or just check out all the festivities from this week that we're going to have but it should be a lot of fun so let's get down to it let's talk about catchy so catchy is a 2019 release by yuko y uh, there is no artist attributed on this game. However, I read a comment on BGG, and take it with a grain of salt, because I don't know if it's necessarily true, but it said that Yuko Y is a high schooler, and this was his very first game design, and that the artist for this game is actually his father. So I can't verify that, but that's a pretty cool bit if it's true. So Ketchy is a two-player trick taker, where we're going to be uh, trying to pull this little cat. His name is Alex. And he's in the middle of the board. And we're going to be trying to pull him one way or the other with the ultimate goal of pulling him all the way to ourselves. And if we can do that, we'll score more points. So we're going to play a hand of seven tricks in this game. So we're going to have seven cards in hand. It's a very small deck in this game. So you're not going to have a lot of, uh, a lot of cards to look at and deal with. It's a great game for kids because it's small hand size, only seven cards in hand. But our deck composition in this game is going to be one through five in uh, three different suits, red, blue, and yellow. And there's also going to be one joker. Uh, Rob, do you have the joker over there? Uh, no, I actually don't have any cards. Oh, oh, that's right. Well, don't worry. I was just doing this as a teach here. I'll give you some cards. but There we go. And here's the joker as well. So the joker has a value of three but is uh, wild as far as suits go. So in this game, you must follow when someone plays a color. You can always play the Joker because it always is considered to be of all the suits. Um, and then we're going to do a couple things. So like I said, one through five in three different suits, you must follow. And then we're going to evaluate the trick every time we play. So let's say I lead with a four yellow. A Rob needs to follow yellow if he has it. I win the trick. So... If Alex the cat is pink side up, <clears throat> pardon me, he goes to the uh, winner of the trick, which right now is me. I won the trick, so he'll come this way. If Alex the cat is blue side up, he goes to the loser of the trick. So how does Alex the cat flip over? Well, let's say that we played that trick, and then I lead out a... <clears throat> I have a very bad example for a hand, but Rob, lead me an odd card. So Rob leads the one of blue. Let's say I play this joker. So anytime two odd cards are played, that's going to make Alex flip over. So Alex flips immediately, and then we evaluate the trick. I followed suit with the joker, so I won the trick. However, this the cat is going to move in the direction of the loser of the trick because he flipped over. So Rob is the loser of the trick. Alex moves back this way. We clear the trick. And now Rob will lead. Whichever direction Alex moves is going to be the person who leads the next trick. So then Rob will lead out. And that's pretty much all the rules. If you play two odds, Alex flips over. If you don't play two odds, Alex doesn't flip over. 
You always evaluate the trick based on who wins the trick. If you don't follow, you will not qualify for winning the trick. Um, what else can I say? There's one little weird exception that can happen, and that's if the Joker is played alongside a three. So if I lead out the Joker and Rob plays a three of yeah anything, this is an equal strength, right? We have two cards of equal strength. Alex will flip over, but he doesn't go in either direction, and then whoever led previously leads again. And that's it. So then we get to scoring. If someone can pull Alex all the way off of this little track in front of them, they win the round and get three points and move their pawn up on this scoreboard. If we play all seven tricks and Alex is on one side or the other of the center, then that player gets two points. And if we play all seven tricks and Alex is still in the middle, both players get one point. We're going to play until somebody gets to seven, and that's the end of the game. Rob, you have any questions for me? Uh, just one. What is this card? That is the start player card. So when we deal, uh -huh. someone's going to have that in their hand, and they are going to take it and exchange it blind with one of these cards out here and just put it in its place. So okay. what we have in each round is two undealt cards at the end of, of that process. So this game is kind of about those two undealt cards, right? Because there's only two of us. So I know everything about my hand, which lets me know everything about Rob's hand, except for those two cards. And a lot of the decisions you're making are based on, on that basically. But if no other questions, let's play <clears throat> catchy. Uh, then the start player is always the person with that start card in each round, which is me right now. So I'm going to just blindly exchange it for one of these cards. And then I will start us off. I'll start us with a four of yellow. Okay. So I win the trick. The cat currently goes to the winner of the trick. So he'll move this way. And then I'll lead again. Um, let's do a one of red. I'll do a four. So Rob pulls the cat towards himself and then he'll lead out. I'll do a one of blue. So I must follow with this three. We do have two odd cards. So the cat will flip over and now it goes towards the loser, which is Rob. So it pulls towards him and he will lead again. Go with the three. I'll be yellow. I'll follow the five. So we have two odds again. Cat flips over and now he'll come towards me, the winner of the trick. Um, I'll do a one of yellow. So Rob does not follow. The cat will flip because two odds. Because he didn't follow, he will automatically lose the trick and pull the cat. Five. follow with a two which loses the trick and pulls the kitty and then i will play this joker and see what rob has so the Five. cat will flip goes to the winner which is rob that's the end of the round yeah, the cat is on his side of the board so he will get two points nice. and we'll just click up we'll make you yellow right there oh good and then we will deal again and that's catchy. You're, yeah, you're pretty much... I probably could have just said, here, play around with me, Rob. And uh, that <laughs> teaches the game by itself because there's there's not a lot going on. But it's a cute package. It's uh, And it's just easy breezy kind of with, you know, you're sitting across the table from your significant other or one of your kids. And it just kind of has a enjoyable little play pattern. To me, anyway. Um, yeah, very simple. Yeah. Smooth. So, I was the start player. I will play the four of yellow. So I'll take the cat. Let's go with a four of blue. Okay. 
and you're kind of just making uh, you know guesses on what those two cards that aren't in the game are because I played that four hoping maybe Rob didn't have the the five of blue he did right <laughs> all right so I'll win that one um Right, come over here, kitty. Um, let's try this. So Rob plays an odd. He flips. Rob did not follow. He loses, which is good for him. <laughs> So I'll play the Joker, which flips him, and he pulls towards me. And then I'll lead a one of yellow. Rob can't follow. I pull the cat all the way over. Three points for James. The crowd goes wild. All right, on to the next round. I know like, uh, you know, the small deck of cards, you know, I think of like button shy games and, and things like that. It was like 18 cards and you can have so much game in it. A lot of times that hasn't hit for me. And I kind of enjoy that this small deck of cards, I enjoy what it does, right? Like, I think it, it's smart. Uh, yeah. Four from Rob. Hmm. So I can't follow is not a great feeling on the first card of the game so you grab him now he knows i can't follow which is not a great feeling yep So I will not follow, but that'll flip him, and he'll come towards me, the loser. So that'll go back to Rob. So I'll not follow, which will lose the trick and pull him towards me. I can't remember i can't remember if you said this but uh if i let's say somebody didn't have the suit that was led and they do have the joker do they have to play the joker no they don't okay yep um let's go with a <clears throat> one of yellow okay so that'll flip him and you'll take him back So I will. You had all the red cards, didn't you? I had a lot of red cards. Yeah. <laughs> That'll bring him back to me. Then I'll lead this, which I think is going to send him back to you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I had all five yellow cards, and I could not. That was very tough to navigate. Like I couldn't really figure out how to use it. I needed to get lead early, and I just couldn't for some reason. All yeah, right. I didn't take as I didn't take as many with my red cards as I thought. The the yellow or the odds kept flipping it. Right. 
Um, okay, I'm start player. Let's go with a blue four from the blue pod. All right, good start. Let's try a blue two. I'll play this five, which will flip him and give it to you. Rob's sitting at four points. If he can pull that kitty all the way off the board, he's got the W. Oh. Um. Okay, I will lose this one. That's not good. Uh, I have to follow, which pulls it to Rob. And I uh, at least, oh, I can't even lose that one. Oh, no. Disaster has struck. Rob takes Alex the cat. And he takes the W in catchy. So that's catchy. Uh, you know, I was telling Rob before we went live, I don't know that I'd call it like a great game, but I think it's a really neat little box, you know, to have. It's tiny, portable, and you can play it two-player with pretty much anybody, like, in my opinion. You can teach that game to anybody, and the limited decisions that are in it feel like... They they feel good to make. I guess I'll say it that way. What do you think of your first taste of it, Rob? I liked it. Uh, I mean, it's not super in depth, but it does have some decisions in there. How what cards to play and when to play them, when to flip the cat. Uh, very simple, cute theme though. Uh, I think it has broad appeal. Yeah, it plays very quick. And if you're looking for this one, uh, it comes in and out of stock in some of the places you can pick up these Japanese trick takers in the States, which is, you know, cloud cap games with Ty, or, uh, you can also find it. I bought it at, uh, big cat games in California. So those are two places you can check. I don't know right now the stock of them at those places, but that's where I would, that's where I would have a look. All right. Let me click some buttons and we'll pop up a wee boy and head from the, from the litter box to the jungle, I guess. Um, all right. So, second game we're going to feature on our two-player Trick Taker Tuesday here on Tricky. There's some alliteration for you. Is a Weemba Way. So, a Weemba Way. It, the first time I read this title, I was like, a Weemba Way? Like, I'm trying to sound it out what they're going for exactly here. And then when somebody else said it, I'm like, oh, a Weemba Way. Like, the lions, you know, a wee there you go that's that's what we're going for so the theme of a weeb away is the lion has died and we need a new king of the jungle so you've got me the black panther up here in the top right rob is the white uh lion or cheetah or tiger i guess he's a white tiger and what we're trying to tiger, do yeah. is become the new king of the jungle how are we going to do that well we're going to play cards from hand and cards on the board to uh, try to take the most tricks and score the most points and win the round. So Weemba is a 2022 release from Matthew Rosell and Oban Ritano. French names, I probably butchered them, but I gave it a go. So let me just deal out a hand, because the first thing you'll notice about a Weemba is the way kind of the uh, display is for each of us. So at the top of the screen, you have my cards showing. In addition to those four cards that are face up, there are four cards underneath them that are currently hidden, and in my hand down here at the bottom that you can't see are six cards in hand. 
So we've got 10 cards available to us that we can play. You can either play from hand or you can play from the cards that are revealed in front of you. You cannot play the cards that are face down in front of you. And if at the end of a trick, one of those cards is uncovered, it will flip over and become an available card for you. So in a Weemba way, we have four suits, one through six. So you'll see uh, four different colors here, green, yellow, gray, and brown, one through six. And in addition to that, there's a trump suit, these eagles, that go seven, eight, nine, ten. In the corner of each card, you've got the value of the card, but also the number of crowns on it. Crowns are what we're competing for. We're going to play all of our cards until we've played all the tricks out. And then whoever has the most crowns in their pile is going to score. They're going to win the round. So you'll notice the elephant, which is a six, the strongest number, only is worth one crown. While, for instance, the uh, rhinoceros here, which is a two, is has two crowns on it. The hyena, the four, has three crowns on it. So you're trying to capture the right cards for the right values. The eagles, actually, the big eagles, the 10 and the 9, actually have negative crowns on them. So they'll let you win a trick, sure, but they're going to cost you as well. So in a Weemba way, you're going to play one card from your hand or from your display, whatever you'd like, and you're always going to trigger its special ability. So let's talk about the special abilities, and then we'll talk a little more about the card play, which is very simple. So we have the mouse. The mouse has no special abilities innate to it, except it always beats the elephant. So if the elephant of the same color is played in this trick, the mouse will win. A Weemba Way is a must-follow game, and if you can't follow, you must trump with an eagle. If you can't do either of those things, you can play any card you like. You will always lose the trick because you did not follow. Um, it's a little bit of, in case there's any other Weemba Way fans that are watching this after the fact, there's a little bit of question in the rule book on if you trigger the power of the, of the card you play if you're not following suit. And I watched a French video on it with the, no English su subtitles and tried to figure it out. And I'm going with yes, you do. It's how I've always played the game. If not, then you can not trigger those abilities if you like. But I believe you're still supposed to trigger the abilities when you don't follow suit. Um, so the mouse always beats the elephant. Then we have a rhinoceros. When you play the rhinoceros, and anytime you play a card, you trigger its power immediately. So I play the rhinoceros. It says I can take one of Rob's face-up cards and put it underneath another stack of cards. So I'm going to say I play this, and I'm going to take Rob's cheetah and tuck it back here behind that stack. It is essentially locked until it gets freed up and can be played. And then Rob would have to follow with a brown card, if possible, and trigger its ability. So there's the rhino. Let's talk about that cheetah. Let's say the cheetah was played. The cheetah lets you decide who will go first. So when you play the cheetah, you say, regardless of what happens in this trick, I'm going first on the next trick. Or regardless of what happens, you're going first in the next trick. If somebody plays a cheetah after a cheetah has been played, then the second cheetah will override and make that decision. Uh, there is the hyena, which has no powers associated to it. It's worth three crowns, and you'll see in the bottom it says four hyenas means you're dead. If you take all four hyena cards, you automatically lose the round, and the round is over. So don't take all four hyena cards. Uh, the snake is the five. What the snake does is let you lock one of your opponent's cards. So when I play the snake, I'm going to say, Rob, you cannot play this eagle. You're supposed to tap it sideways to signify that. So then Rob will make a choice with another card, and after he's done that, the eagle will come back available to him. You can decide to lock one of your opponent's hand cards if you'd like to, but you're doing it blind. So say you really want them to play what's on display, you can say, Rob, I'm going to lock your, you know, at the table you'd point and touch, but here you can say your third hand card, and he'll just have to be on the honor system on that one. And then lastly is the elephant, which has no powers, just the strongest card in the game. So let's talk about these eagles. Uh, like I said, you must follow if you can, but if you can't, you must play an eagle. An eagle is always going to win uh, over a standard suit card because they're all higher, 7, 8, 9, 10, over your 1 through 6. But you do have a, an odd option when you play an eagle. You can either flee or fight. If you fight, you're saying, I'm going to trump the trick and win it. 
and you take both cards. If you flee, you're saying, I'm going to play this eagle, but I'm not going to fight. And you still have to take the card. So if I, if I said flee, I would still have to take the eagle, but Rob wins the trick and would take the other card. The only time I can see that being relevant is if you're trying to avoid taking the fourth hyena. I've yet to see someone actually flee in a game when I've been playing with them. So it's there. If someone leads an eagle, you must follow with an eagle if possible, and you may not flee in that case. So we will play all of our uh, cards, which will be 14 tricks, and then we're simply going to count up the number of crowns we have, assuming nobody took four uh, hyenas, and then whoever has the most crowns wins the round. If you win the round, you flip your card over to the gold side, and if you win another round, once you're flipped, you win the game. So essentially, best of three is what we're playing here. Um, what else is there for me to tell you, Rob? I think that's it. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, no, it seems pretty straightforward. Yep, it is. Um, we don't reveal a card that has been uh, uncovered until the end of each trick. I mentioned that earlier. Um, oh, there are 45 total crowns up for grabs. So, you know. I'm not expecting anyone to sit here and grind out a hand of a Weemba way, but once you hit 23, you have uh, secured the win for the round. However, there are those Eagle cards, which could tick you back in the other direction. All right, let's recall and shuffle and deal these out. Uh, the starting player in the first round is the player with less crowns showing, which appears to be me. And Eight. then in future rounds, whoever loses the previous round will choose who goes first after the deal. All right. So I'm going to take a look at my hand here. Um. I will lead this snake and I'm going to lock this cheetah. So then you must follow gray if you have it. And we know you have at least uh, this mouse. So we know you have at least one gray, but we don't know yeah. it's in your hand. It's not what I wanted to see, Rob. Not what I wanted to see. Uh, so you can just click player two takes trick. Your cheetah does unlock after you've satisfied not playing it and then you lead so it only lasts for one round that's not too bad yeah yeah and all the effects are like that they're none of them are devastating although the rhino burying people's cards is very fun and powerful i'll lead out on that wow so i actually cannot follow so i will trump with the eagle and I will fight, not flee, because I'd rather win this than not win it. So you sure? You sure you don't want to flee? I take the trick, and this card reveals. Another eagle. Um, okay, now I will play the hyena. So he will allow you to tuck um, one of my face-up cards behind a, behind a different stack. And you could actually tuck this uh, unrevealed card because, uh, well, no, I don't think that's true. Oh, yeah, yeah, a top card. You can tuck a top card, which is this unrevealed card. So gotcha. that's an option. I will tuck your nine. Okay, so I will win the trick. And then I'll do this cheetah, and I will go first. Oh, I should have revealed this card first. Um, play my mouse. So I will win that trick. And we'll reveal these cards. Um, I'll play the elephant.
I'll play my three. I assume you'll go first. Uh, yeah, I'll go first. Okay, so I'll take the trick. And we are supposed to like pull the hyenas out to make sure we're keeping track. But I think I've taken the only one so far. Mike? Oh, and I think, did you have a card to flip up? Yeah. I did, sorry. Um, okay. Oh, and you get to lock a card. I'll, I'll, I'll you can, I'll I mean, turn it. Uh, you right click and kind of like twist around the oh, outside. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Well, you can also just say, hey, James, don't play this right now. <laughs> um, okay, so I cannot follow and must trump. So I will trump and take. Do you have enough eagles? Yeah, right. So my rhino's back. Um, Oh, uh, reveal your new card. Let's let's try the elephant. Let's see if I can get that hyena. Nope. So you win the trick. Well. Out in the cheetah, and I'll go first again. Um, so I have to trump because I again cannot follow. Oh my god! Well, this one's not great because it's, I mean, I win nothing and you still get to go first. I guess I kept two points away from you, yeah, but you lost what two points too, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, cheetah. Okay. Sorry, um, I said cheetah. What I meant oh, was yeah. hyena. <laughs> um, so, oof. I'll. You got another wild hidden in there? I, I do not. There's only one left, and it's buried in the top of my board. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm crunching up here. Yeah, I'll play the rhino, and I will tuck your cobra behind this other cobra. So you take the trick. And you can kind of already see, this one has just more decisions than catchy right. like it's it, it just is a more interesting game for sure i'll play the five so you can lock oh, that wow. rhino or you can lock one of my hand cards hmm. you know what i will lock one of your hand cards i, I don't know how many you have left in your hand i have three um, uh the middle one okay well, I have to follow with the cheetah, and I will. Uh, I'll go. Let me. Let me think. Do I? You're gonna win this, and then, yeah, I'll go first, and I'll lead the rhino and tuck your cobra back here. It's not what I wanted to see. Ooh, nice. All right, and then I'll lead. Did you? You took a hyena, right? Yes, okay. I believe so. I think you did. Uh, I'd have too. to double check. I think I did. Uh, I'll go hyena. And so you won't activate because there's nothing to do in that case as far as right. tucking cards. So I take that and then I'll go mouse. You don't follow. So I take and then. I'll take this one. I should be good here. So um, why don't you count your crowns because you have less cards. And again, it's 45 total. So there's no automation on here. I got to ask someone to do that, I guess, or figure out how to do it myself. <laughs> 14 for me. Big okay. showing on my part. Yep. So I take the round one win and we're going to recall.
call and shuffle and deal. And after you see the board, you can decide which of us goes first. I did have all four eagles, which feels slightly unfair. It gave me a, yeah. lot, a lot of leads is what it gave me. Yeah, I mean, it happens, but mm -hmm. um, I will go first. Okay. Uh, that always means you probably also have the mouse because you feel comfortable enough to play him. Uh, I will play the rhino and I'm going to tuck your hyena back here. Tough decision. I'll play that and I'll go first. Okay, I will take with the elephant. So Rob still leads. So you lock a card. really matters we got all the same stuff out here um i guess i'll just lock your elephant okay i have to follow brown for my hand anyway so uh i'll follow with a rhino i'm gonna tuck this hyena back here too <laughs> I will lead with my rhino and tuck your elephant behind. No, no, there. Okay, I'll play the snake and I will lock. Uh, lock your rhino. Okay, so I take. We reveal some cards. And then I'm going to lead. This snake. Ooh, I can lock in a. Di that's pretty cool. I get opportunity to lock two cards. Um, let's just take a shot at your hand. Uh, you have three cards. Let's lock the. I do. Yeah. Let's lock the middle card. Okay. That hurts Ooh, quite a bit. Good. Oh, nice. All right. So I'll take that, reveal, and that rhino's back now. Um, yeah, let's go elephant. So you can tuck something. I will tuck that. some cards <laughs> more eagles <laughs> uh i'll play the cheetah and i'll go first uh oh he's gonna try to he's gonna try to dump all the hyenas on me aren't you i don't have a lot of options okay. i think i'm already out of it for points so it might you might be uh Okay, that's interesting. I haven't had the the hyena threat happen in a game where it's like an actual threat. I will. Oh, this is interesting. I'll, I'm going to lead this eagle. So if you have an eagle, you must lead. Otherwise, just play whatever you want. No eagle. So you'll take um... first, I assume. Or no? Mm, no, I'm actually going to let you take first. Oh, man. All right. Ooh, let's play this cheetah, and you can be first. <laughs> hey, this is fun. I've never seen this happen. Oh. Um, maybe I can get some points here. Let's 
go with that. Yep. And let's go with that. Um, go to Trump. Oh, no. I'm eating them all. Well done, Rob. So that's the end. That was of the, close. Yeah, you. I, I had four Trump again. So that you had all four Trump again. That's kind of fun that we saw first round. I had the Trump. I was able to kind of run you over a bit, and then this round, I was stuck with all the Trump. And you're like, and I had buried your hyenas to make them a late play, right? So then you're just yeah. like, here, take the hyenas. <laughs> I'm just making sure I didn't have any. No, in I'm here. pretty sure no. I was counting them up. Yep. All right, so we're both 1-1, one, one, and then this is the rubber match. So I lost, so I will decide who goes first. Here's some more Trump for me again. So <laughs> <laughs> That was pretty cool to see, actually. Like I said, I've never seen the hyenas factor in before. So, um, I will... I'll go first. I'm going to lead this eagle. What's the eagle? I'll just give you a hyena then. Oh boy, here we go again. All right. Um, let's go. another eagle <laughs> I have another che uh, another uh, hyena to give you or I would I kind, um, I kind of thought you would if you if you could. <laughs> I'll do this, and I think I'll just tuck your. I'll tuck this under here. Okay. So we'll deal some cards. Um, I'm gonna go with the cobra, and I'm gonna lock your cheetah your cheetah's locked don't play your cheetah it is locked <laughs> oh that hurts good then let's do this green hyena And I'll just have you keep going first. Oh, man. Rob, you're killing me. I was really hoping the temptation of the points was going to get you to use your snake there. No. 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 <laughs> no. All right. Not this time. I think we need to do this, then. Let's play this eagle. Ooh, another eagle. This uh, hyena out, so I don't forget about him. Green and yellow hyenas. Yep. And I'll play that. And I'll. Uh, your elephant here. Okay. So I take, I can't play the elephant. Okay. Um, let's go with this cobra and I'll lock your elephant. So that. And. 
fuck your hyena. Oh, I don't like that. It'll raise the suspense for the end of the game. Um, okay. Let's let's go ahead and do this. <laughs> yes, I had all four Trump again. That's Crazy. Kind of bonkers for three hands in a row. Although you've really managed to flip this, <laughs> my my thoughts on their head here with avoidance of the hyena. Not elephant. All right, take him. Who was the greedy guy? Um, let's do this rhino. I'm gonna tuck this elephant back here. I'll take that and I'll let you go first again. Yikes. Let's see what you got in there. Another cheetah. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, let's go with this mouse. Um, and I have nothing in hand, so you can lock one of those I'll lock, two cards. I'll lock your mouse. Okay. So I take. Oh. Oh no, God. That was the worst flip possible. And if you only would have locked my elephant, like, yep. All right. So that I play this, you win with the, Oh, I, I guess you have hands cards in hand. I don't. So I'm just like playing off the stack here. Oh, play. Oh, wrong spot. My rhino. And can I just, you cannot, this under you cannot, what? um, you can only move it to another row so that it will not have an effect. Mm -mm. Well, then I won't do that. But now you know I have the rhino. No big yeah, deal. But we're about to know, I think, because I'm going to have to flip my card. I'll play the cheetah, and I will have you go first. Okay, so you win it. And then I lead this guy. I know nothing happens. Ooh, I cheetah and you go first. Mm. Is that my out? Damn it. Is that my out? <laughs> yes. Ooh, boy, I was sweating that oh. one with that hyena in the back end. I assume, yeah. I, assume I got you. Probably. I don't know. I have 22. That means but you have, have all those negatives. That means I have 23. There's 45 points up for grabs. So after all that jockeying for the hyenas, 23 to 22, I take the double. Then don't you lose two points for the... Uh, I know. It's, there's Eagles? 45 total, so... Like here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. Uh, and three, then you lose the three. Twenty-three. Yep. Gotcha. Man, so all that hyena jockeying, and we come down to one point at the end. That was, a, that was close. That was a good. That was a good play of a weemba way. We saw a little bit of everything there. It was like a. Yeah, set up deck. That was good. Like really. Well, and that was that was uh, three hands in a row where you had every wild. I had every wild, and we still played a literal like paper thin game, right? Like, yeah, yeah that's pretty. That was pretty cool to see, actually, because that's not going to happen most hands. And, and honestly, those eagles were an absolute like crutch. I didn't want them. They were they were horrible to have in my hand. I was like, because. The longer the hand went on, the more Rob knew where they were. And so he could just start feeding yep. me. 
Yeah, that was good. I think this game is is very good for two players. Like this really gives you the feel of a trick taker. I mean, a lot of times when when people say trick taker with special powers, I'm always kind of like a little bit of an eye roll in there where each card has a special power, but here it really works because they're subtle but very impactful and like weaponized. Like you can really use them to do some fun things. Yeah. No, it it was fun. I like this a lot. Definitely more thinky than catchy, but yeah. uh, not not overly thinky. No, not like deep or a hard teach or anything like that. Once you give people the rules, you you know what's going on. So, all right, that's a weeb away. Same thing as a uh, as a uh, catchy. I know it's been in and out of stock at Cloudcap Games. It's also I bought mine on a uh, Philibert.net, which is a French uh, store that has like the most amazingly fast worldwide shipping. Have you ever ordered from them, Rob? No, I haven't. Oh my god, it shows up on your porch in like three or four days. They're, they must be like the Amazon of of global shipping because it's insane that they can just get them here that quick. Uh, but yeah, I hope that was enjoyable to see two different two player trick takers. You know, we're under an hour for two teaches and two plays. You can't really beat that when like you're out with one friend or out with your your spouse and you having a beer or at a brewery or something like that. These are games you can just take along in your pocket or your bag or whatever and and you're in business so i hope that was cool to get a flavor of uh, a taste of both of those actually all right well thanks to rob for joining me for a two-player episode of tricky and if you like what you see again visit dads on uh, join the discord chat games with us and uh you can also check us out on patreon or you know uh give us a little like or follow or subscribe or whatever it is people do on twitch old man alert uh until then until next time we'll be back again with some more tricky see you then